Clap, clap, clap your hands and stomp your feet. You're listening. You're listening to the Clap Your Hands podcast, hosted by Elliot Shore Parks and Kyle Newbeck. Here they come. But, um, all right. So yesterday, as you mentioned, you did speak to Mo Baba. Anything else from that that uh, other than the two big lineup thing that he mentioned? Any other takeaways from uh, your meeting with Mo Bamba? What was he like? Like, what's the what's the vibe like for uh, Mo Bamba? No, he seems like a nice kid. You know, he uh, he came in and he actually asked for. Normally, this is a PR thing that they ask, but he came in himself and asked for everyone who would ask him a question to just tell them their name, and so he could like start to get to know everybody. Always a is, power move by the athletes. Always a power right. Move. It's like just a very small thing, but that's yeah. It's clearly either he's just a very kind kid or someone has coached him well on how to deal with the media. So, Mm -hmm. you know, thumbs up to him on that. But yeah, I think he's got the right attitude coming in here, just saying, I'm going to, I'm going to get in where I fit in type stuff. And, you know, doesn't seem like he, like, again, the, the two big stuff, he doesn't seem like he's locked in saying, yeah, I don't really care about playing center. I think he does have experience playing with other bigs like Wendell Carter Jr. And guys like that in Orlando. And so him and Joel have a previous relationship. And he actually said that Joel was one of the reasons that he came here. Like Joel gave mm. him a call and said, I think you'd really help us. And so I thought that Recruiting was interesting. Joel. Love it. Yeah. I mean, obviously the more, the spicier press conference was Pat Beverly. Cause he's yes. just willing to drop F bombs and curse a little bit. And he's talking about his pottery class that he did and, Phil at the Bach bar, the Bach building, at least yes. this week, which definitely familiar with the Bach building. I think Elliot and I have run into each other there. We at did. Points I in was time. About two bottles of wine deep when we did. But yes, I did uh, <laughs> see you and your lovely, I believe, fiance at the time. I don't think you were married. Yeah, yet. that was prior to our, our <laughs> wedding. Uh, so, yeah, so Beverly talked a lot about getting used to the city. He made an impassioned pitch to James Harden to stick around. Mm-hmm. Also said that Tyrese Maxey doesn't need to get better on defense. I saw that. Said it in like the funniest possible way that he could. So, yeah, I mean, both guys were for, you know, middle of the summer in July, having just signed, were good interviews. And I think Beverly will be a fun guy to cover and that he just seems like a guy who will be miserable when they lose and miserable and like a light somebody's ass on fire sort Mm -hmm. of way, which can go either way in terms of team harmony, but for your and my purposes, I think it'll be great. So Patrick Beverly, let's get into more of what he said. You touched on it, but I thought his kind of his kind of pitch to James Harden, like it really convinced me. And as I've said before, I am easily impressionable with this type of stuff. But when he talked about how, you know, their moms are best friends and it's been, he's been one of James is and his vice versa best friend since he came in the league. And obviously they played together and he talks as if James is going to be here. You remember when he talked about uh, when he spoke with doc uh, about how he would fit with Philly. And he said, you know, you James and Joel will be really good together. I just wonder if when Patrick Beverly signed, if he already knows the answer to, if James is coming, like, obviously they're close. I'm sure they talked. I don't know if he was, asked yeah, he that. said yesterday, their moms yeah. are best friends. It's not yeah, even it, just that they're close. Exactly. Right. So I don't know if he said this yesterday, but did he say if he's spoken to James, like about the signings? He said something to the effect of put it this way. James knows I'm here. And I was like, right. It's a non-answer. It's a way of saying that you probably talk to him, but you're not going to say you're not going to tell us. I just listening to him speak yesterday, knowing he's now here on the team. I mean, I don't think the Montrez thing had anything to do with James, but Montrez is now here. Patrick Beverly is one of James' best friends. I don't know, man. Just listening to Pat, it really feels like James is going to be back. That was my main takeaway from the Beverly thing. Obviously, he seems like a great personality. He's going to be a ton of fun for you. That'll cover him every day. Ton of fun for me as someone that's on the radio and doing this pod. Like He's going to be awesome. I think he's a good fit, blah, 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 all those things. The main takeaway is he's like putting that hard pitch out to James. And I think you've seen the Sixers start to throw James a lifeline a little bit of, Hey man, like, come on back. We want you. Well, and I, I've tried to stress this all along. I think it's important to note that all the ire from James's camp has been directed 
essentially at Maury and the front office. Mm -hmm. And that that's a useful divide for Joel and Nick Nurse and like the more important people on the bench and on the floor because they can, if they're trying to sell James on coming back, and it certainly seems based on what Pat's saying, based on what Joel said to Rachel Nichols in Vegas, they're trying to say to him, we have open arms for you, that you can come back. This is not a situation like we saw with Ben where they said the right things for a little bit, but it was, you could tell that it was yeah. phony. It was, it was not an authentic, like, oh yeah, we really want Ben. Certainly the team did just because trading him from a position of strength would have been better than trading him with him acting as he was and how he was handling himself then. But I think this is genuine. I do think that, especially in Joel Embiid's case, he probably recognizes if they trade James Harden, they're not getting a James Harden back, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to get several role players. Maybe if they're lucky, get a flawed star back for him. And so I think someone like Joel, who is coming off an MVP, but then an embarrassing playoff exit, doesn't want to take a step back this year. He doesn't want to come out of a season that ends in severe disappointment and say, yeah, we're going to be like a 46 win team and we might scrape our way out of the first round, but we'll lose to any real contender in the second round. Like that's not how he is wired or wants to be. So I think he's one of the guys leading that charge. And I think everybody else has followed suit so far. And so look, I still have my doubts about James returning. I think they're going to continue to humor offers and talk to other teams, specifically the Clippers. I know they keep coming up, but again, they're the known interested party. Mm -hmm. But end of the day, they do seem like they're comfortable with him coming back. And these guys continue to send sign after sign to James that that is the case. So I thought the Joel Embiid answer to Rachel Nichols about James Harden was one of the better quotes I've seen Joel had. And we talk about this, uh, about Joel at the podium. After the playoff loss to the, the Celtics, he's up there laughing, making little kind of side jokes about uh, the Giannis quote. He's doing the whole, somewhat out of context, obviously, but me and James can win by ourselves. Joel has had poor moments when it comes to answering questions. I mm -hmm. thought his answer to Rachel Nichols was, was really good, and for this reason. Like, let's be honest. The James Harden trade thing is ha has to be somewhat embarrassing for him and his camp. They fl floated this idea all season that the Rockets were going to be super interested. Rockets weren't really that interested. They thought they were going to get a massive contract. They ended up essentially having to opt in. Now, I know that's so he can play for a winner, but it's also because, let's be honest, there was not a ton of money out there. Then he demands this trade to try to get to the Clippers. He's not traded by that July 1st deadline where the CBA would have made it easier. And it doesn't seem like teams are lining up and offering big time incentive, late, like good packages for James Harden. So this whole James Harden thing has been somewhat embarrassing for him, I would imagine, and also definitely for, for his agent. What Joel did with that Rachel Nichols, Rachel Nichols interview is step up and go, hey, man, we want you back. Like, you're going to be a friend for life. Like, you're still a great player. I know we can win with you. He really kind of made it so that James, he threw him a lifeline. I think that's the best term to use when, and I know I've said already, but I think that's the best term. James needs to feel like if he comes back to the Sixers, it's not with his tail tucked between his legs. Like he wants to feel if he comes back, it's because they want me back. They need me back. Yeah, I have other options maybe, but I'm deciding to come here. Joel doing that, I think was very important as a leader of the team. You're right. When, when Ben was gone, he said it, but he didn't really mean it. Like he talked about how James is handling this, like a professional and their friends. I thought it was an extremely good slash mature and important answer from Joel to kind of mend the bridge with James Harden and make it so when he does come back, it's excited to come back and not, man, I'm only here because nothing else worked out. Yeah, that and that last part is really important because if, and that's what I was getting at with the Ben thing. Like you could tell that it was, performative to a degree with yeah. Ben where they're saying, yeah, we, we'd embrace him and have him back, but you could just from tone and how they were discussing it, it was very clear. All parties needed to move on in this instance. I, again, it comes back to Joel wants to win. And I think he genuinely believes and sees James coming back as his best possible path or most realistic possible path 
to winning this season. And I think it's that simple. So then he gets in front of a microphone and, you know, for wh- whatever faults Joel has as a player, as a leader, whatever, he is definitely honest. It, it, it's, yes. it's going to come through in one way or another because he'll he'll start giving a canned answer and then say, but then again, and then just absolutely skewer somebody. So I think it was mature of him to take this approach. I think it's realistic on his end. Mm -hmm. Looking at the landscape, probably being aware of exactly what the offers are out there for James, even though he'll he loves to say, I'm not in the front office. I don't run the team. You and I both know that he's at least aware of what's going on. He better be involved. He's (laughs) every other star in the league is involved. I would hope he's involved. He's definitely aware of what's being floated out there as potential packages for James. And so. I think he's doing the right thing. I think the players on the team who have spoken about this have all handled this the right way. They're essentially framing it as, look, this is the business. And you can make Daryl Morey or Josh Harris or whoever, name one of the people that are high atop the power structure. You make them the bad guy and then open your arms to your teammate and say, look, man, we're here. We want to play with you. Mm -hmm. We have had a lot of success. We believe more success can come. And I think that, that is definitely the right approach to take on there. So- Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button right here. You'll get all the videos in a playlist and make sure you leave a comment in the section below to let us know what you think. And don't forget to follow us on social media. To stay up to date. All our latest updates, new episodes, new podcasts. Links are in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.